Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of it's GSXR O'Clock. So this week, I thought it's time to jump on the brakes. Well, refurbish them anyway. The bike's been sat for eight to 10 years, uh, and as you can imagine, the brakes are not in a great state. The calipers are very furry, and the pistons are stuck on, and the master cylinder is also looking bad, and the plunger's stuck as well. So the brakes are just not gonna work in the state they're in. So I shouldn't need too many tools today. I've got a ratchet with a socket, I've got a couple of spanners, uh, I've got some brand new bits again, and Tim at Suzuki Vintage Parts has helped us out again with some genuine parts. Again, there's some bits I don't think you can beat genuine, especially on older bikes, and one of them are the caliper seals. So I've got four caliper seals here. I've also got a tiny little one that goes between the two caliper halves. I've got a master cylinder repair kit. There's a spring, a plunger, some seals, a circlip, and all sorts in there. So that should get the master cylinder working back how it should be. I've got some brake cleaner because we're doing brakes and we're going to need to clean them. And the last bit is a bit of a specialist tool. It's a motorcycle brake piston removing tool. I'll open it up and try not to spill it everywhere. It's quite a fancy bit of kit, uh, but it just helps you remove pistons from the brake calipers. And I'll show you how to use that in just a moment. So come in a bit closer and we'll start working on the front brake caliper. Okay, so we need to strip the caliper apart can use a socket and ratchet for that. Now, as you might notice, there's no bolts on the outside of this caliper. They're actually on the inside, which makes cracking them off when they're bolted up on the bike hard work. So, fingers crossed, we can get these undone on the bench. Might need a second pair of hands for this. Ready? Go. There's one. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Wasn't so bad. Always handy to have a second pair of hands with you. Okay, so that's the caliper apart. You can see the two halves, you can see the pistons. It's looking pretty rough in there, so one thing I'll always say is these little seals here. I have reused them in the past, but I'm going to put new ones in today. But if you are reusing them, make sure you don't lose them because they're pretty small. So it's time to get the pistons out. Luckily, they're hollow, so this brake piston tool will work really well. Fingers crossed. So, a couple of bits to set up. We've got this piece here, which unscrews. Now what we need to do is select the right size, one of these, to go in the piston. A bit big, a bit small, just right. Now, you might see the slots in there. That's because that goes through. And then we put this back on here. And we've got this bit, which as you do it up tighter and tighter, it spreads this out, gripping the piston, and then you can use the slide hammer attachment to pull the piston out. Now that's in a best case scenario, that's how it should work in theory, but as we know, things don't always go to plan. You have to do this one up really tight, and I find twisting it to see if the piston moves is a good indicator if it's coming out. So, no, might have to do it up a little bit tighter. 
let's see what happens okay that's still really tight in there so I'm gonna have to try and do this up even tighter oh. right I finally got that to move now I'm gonna use Bill to give me a second pair of hands and hopefully we can twist and pull and get this piston out but it is in there rather tight Okay. Mm -hmm. there we go. There we go. She's almost there. There we go. That's one piston down. Just three more to go. Okay. Let's see how we get on with piston two. see that's absolutely minging I'm not surprised they were hard to get out one side down one more to go let's see how we get on just to cut your hand off. There we go. Ming in. hurt me hands but as you can see pretty minging as well now what we need to do is start cleaning it up you might notice I've got this little pick so what I'm going to do is remove the original seals they're going to be pretty stuck in there all right okay so that's a dust seal and then this one ooh, it's like varnish in there that is the oil seal they are minging I'm going to be a bit controversial here when I rebuild these I'm only going to put an oil seal in I'm not going to put a dust seal in uh, the bike's only going to get used in the summer it's not going to get used for any rubbish and to be fair it's going to get well looked after now so I'm going to leave them out and then you have less chance of the brakes binding I wouldn't recommend you do this I'd recommend what the manufacturers do which is put a dust seal in but I'm going to leave the dust seals out but now what I need to do is gently scratch away and get all the crud out because there's a lot of crud in here which will affect the seals when I try and put them in so this bit's going to be a bit long and boring I'll speed it up a bit and put the tunes on now I've cleaned them out the best I can I think they're looking pretty good the pistons don't look too bad one of them's got a little bit of damage which you'll see now but we're there it's time to rebuild them so we've got our genuine seals we're gonna open all the packets because they're all the same And then 
one by one we'll put the seals in so this bit will be the interesting part to see how well they go in so fingers crossed I don't want to stretch them too much if I can help it this is there we go that seal's gone in rather well so now let's try the first piston see how well it goes in I want to make sure it goes in nice and level and even all the way down oh look at that beautifully done so on to the next one went in even better. Next piston, let's see how we get on. Yeah, nice and level. Ah, there we go. Jobs are good in. Now you might notice I haven't put any dust seals in, which I did say earlier in the video. I'm going to leave them out. This thing's only going to get used on nice dry sunny days and it's going to be serviced very regularly now. So I'm going to leave them out to stop the chance of the brakes dragging again. So let's move on to the other half. One more seal. Which one should we go for? Let's do this one. So I squeeze it in. It's always trying to start the first bit really. Go. Pop that in. There we go, sorted. Now I've got the piston. This one's got a few marks on the edge, which I think the original dust seals could have been grabbing on, but I'm not sure. But we're going to put it in. We're going to be as gentle as possible. There we go. That was done. last seal for this caliper let's try and get it started there we have it that seals in now it's time for the piston there we go again try and get it in level push it, push it down gently there we have it. So, that bit's done. Next all we need to do is assemble the two halves of the caliper. But, we've got the seals up here that we need to put in. So, this bit could be awkward. But the threads are on this side. So we'll lay these on, just like that. Just like that. We'll gently put this over, make sure it lines up. There we go. That's one bolt in and another bolt in. Now I'm just going to do these up finger tight for the moment just so we don't lose those seals. There we go, that's the caliper done. All I need to do is put the brake pads in it. I need to make sure I torque those up as well, but I'll do that when I've mounted it. Hopefully I can get the torque wrench in there. Uh, yeah, so all I need to do is the other front brake caliper and then the rear caliper. And we've also got the front brake master cylinder to rebuild, which I think we'll do that next. <laughs> One front brake master cylinder that needs a refurb, needs rebuilding. Now I haven't done one of these for a while, so it's going to be a learning curve for all of us. If you can see down there, I've probably got some better shots. Uh, it's really corroded and yucky and horrible, so I've got to take that apart. But to put it all back together so it's as good as new, 
I need this, which Suzuki supply, and it's a rebuild kit. So there's a spring, a circlip, some other rubber boots, and then a plunger. So they all need to go in there. But first, I've got to try and get all the other stuff out. So wish me luck. So I'm going to have a look in here. There's a rubber boot, which I believe comes off, but it's all very brittle. And uh, yeah, so I've got to see how I take that out and then remember how it come out so I can put the new one on. So, okay, that pulls off, it says. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. That definitely isn't going back on. I'm really glad I've got a rebuild kit. So, one thing I have noticed is in here is there's actually a metal spring to keep the shape of it. So, it's good to know. So, we can see the plunger is now exposed. And I believe down here somewhere, yep. Yeah, there's a tiny little circlip which I think I'm going to struggle to get at but let me have a look into the toolbox and I'll see what I can find now I've got a pair of circlips but they won't actually fit down there now the little tools I use to get the caliper seals out I think and this isn't the way you should remove a circlip I think I've got I've managed to ping it up so a little bit of it sticking out I think I can get under there and I might be able to just prise this out. So let's see how I get on. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. Obviously, it's not the way to remove a circlip, but needs must sometimes. So that's out, and the plunger's already come out. So let's see what this looks like for the first time, shall we? Aha. Uh -huh. So, I need to remember how this all works. So we've got a spring that looks like it tapers down a little bit towards here. And it looks like it's sort of stuck in the end. Yeah. Has that one got one of them on the end? Yes, it has. So, I think this won't be too bad. So what I need to do now is give this a bloody good clean. There we go, that looks better already. So a couple minutes of giving it a clean and then I think it's time to start assembling it. So that's nice and clean down there now. Didn't take too much cleaning at all. Uh, this is the new one here. You see, a bit shinier. That one's a little bit minging. So they're both laid out in the same order. So I'm going to put that piece on there. Like that. Now I thought that piece was actually part of the plunger, but it's not. It's just kind of stuck to it. So that needs to go down the middle. I'm not very happy with that. Put that on there. Put that in here. There we go. So I'm pushing that down and it's springing up which is what it wants to do. So next piece this one here so we'll push that in wasn't expecting that I must admit so take two <laughs> so we'll put that bit in okay so first bits in we've got the plunger and what we're gonna do is drop the circle over the top because last time it 
was pinging out a little. So. Okay, so that's going to stop that pinging out. So we'll push it all the way down, make sure it seats, and it pings straight back up. So what I need to do is push the circlip down, keep it nice and level, maybe push the plunger in a bit. Now in an ideal world I'd have the proper circlip pliers, but unfortunately I don't, so just got to try and do the best I can with what I've got. I just don't want to go in there. Okay, I'm struggling. I'm going to have to think of another idea. Well, I'm not entirely sure how I did that, I'm going to be completely honest, but I was messing around with it and all of a sudden there's that click that if you've ever took a circlip in or out you'll know that sound and it just made it which I'm really happy about but at the same time I'm gutted I wasn't actually recording so I do apologize about that but it's in that's the main thing so the last thing to put in is this little boot that like protects it all so it was a bit awkward to get out but we'll see what happens let's try and pop this down there Quite a tight fit that is. Let's try again. No, nope. keeps going down at an angle. Let's see if we can. What I might try really gently is a little screwdriver, but be very gentle. There we go. That's a bit better. Just what we needed. Nice and gentle though. See, almost there. Uh, there we go, sorted. And that just wants a little push down there. Excellent. So now, here's the back of that. We've got a plunger and it plunges. So I'm pretty happy that that is rebuilt now. I've got all the bits left over. Now the way to find out if this does actually work is hook it up to the hydraulic braking system but the brake lines that are on it wasn't very good and I need some new ones. So what I'm going to do next week is I'm going to pop out and get some new braided lines made for the bike. I've got to take the bike with me and I'll be able to show you how a set of braided lines are made, which I'm actually quite excited to see myself. So we won't be able to bleed the brakes up this week. Next week should be really exciting. So that's it. That's another week done. We're a little bit closer to getting it on the road. We've been loving all your comments. We really have seen some great comments in some of the Facebook groups as well so thank you very much guys a big thumbs up to everyone and if you feel like subscribing and hitting the bell button I think it's there somewhere um, you won't miss any of our uploads and we upload a video every Sunday at 9pm so thanks for watching guys and until next time we'll see you later